So um, I'll talk about um, a proof of concept implementation of um, Blockly and MPS. First, I'll say something about Scratch, which is sort of a precursor to Blockly. Scratch is a language targeted primarily at children, and um, it's a projectional language because you do not edit its direct representation, but you are acting upon the projection that has the form of draggable blocks. So you see here an example. You can drag them with your mouse and reorder them, and this way you can construct the AST of the, of, of the program. It is an educational tool with considerable traction, so I thought it would be interesting to uh, try to do some kind of bridge between uh, this kind of thing and MPS. Um, I'm not actually interested in uh, Scratch per se, but more in Blockly, which is a more general thing. It is a library and a uh, set of tools for creating block-based languages and editors. So the resulting languages look similar to Scratch, but you can create your own languages. And what's interesting is that you can use Blockly to define Blockly blocks, which is nicely meta. I can show you an example. So in Blockly, you can, so how do I, say this? How do I yeah. So in Blockly, you can uh, use Blockly to create the definitions of blocks. So they have their own like language to do this. And you are basically specifying the fields and statements and, and values as they call uh, those uh, primary components of, of the block. So here we have a vehicle definition definition, and the resulting block is a vehicle definition, and it looks like this. Yeah. What's good about, what's interesting about uh, this blockly thing is that the physical metaphor uh, makes it intuitive to a lot of people, especially beginners, and that all the available blocks are in a palette. So it's sort of a complementary uh, to code completion. So you have to first choose what you want to, to use, and then you drag it into place. What's also good about this approach, especially for beginners, is that containment and hierarchy are intuitively represented. So you don't have to care about, uh, like, priorities of operators and stuff like that, because it's, it's clear from the visual presentation. Cons is that some it's somewhat clumsy to use, because it's just slower to use the mouse than to use the keyboard. It may waste some screen state. And most importantly, there are few tools. So basically, people who grew up doing scratch programming are restricted to a very narrow set of tools. So I thought maybe it would be interesting to create a version of uh, Blockly or a particular language built using Blockly in MPS so that hypothetically people who grew up like learning scratch, yeah? Yeah, yeah, okay. Who, lear uh, who learned scratch uh, would sort of feel comfortable, but get uh, much, much wider tool support. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I should say um, using uh, a language that was constructed using the Blockly framework. So from the end user point of view. Yeah, I'm just claiming that it's sort of clumsy to use in, in, in its in original incarnation. So like you, someone creates a language using this Blockly meta language, which is, which is also built upon Blockly, but it doesn't matter. And then someone uses this language and 
there is no way to use it efficiently using keyboard and that. Uh -huh. Yes, yes. No, 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 no. I, I don't, uh, I don't use Pokli in that way. So it's just I'm copying stuff, but I'm not using it. Yes. Okay. It's clear. So uh, why Blockly should famili feel familiar uh, to uh, Blockly users? Faster editing, auto completion, advanced code navigation and search, same variable renaming. It turns out that the variable re renaming in languages uh, generated by Blockly is seriously, by default, seriously broken. So like if you have two variables in your program in different different scopes, then Blockly just renames both of them. Maybe you can somehow uh, fix that manually, but by default, just this thing. Um, version control would be nice to have. And these things like go to concept, go to editor, so you can inspect the language that's behind. Problems uh, of, oh yeah, so why, why Blockly? Problems with implementation were slow startup, doesn't run on the web, unfortunately, yet, and drag and drop functionality not preserved. Some details, um, in Blockly every block has an ID, and this should make conversion between Blockly and NPC much easier, because you can use this ID as the ID of the instance of the concept. Um, I, yeah, so, I, I, a helper language was created, uh, so it I'll return to that later. Yeah, so conclusions, not yet. I'll... Yeah, is it readable? Sort of? Yeah, so what we have here is sort of a proof of concept. Um, I have basically turn your attention to those two languages, to Blockly and Blockly XML. So, um, I created a particular JavaScript-like language in Blockly, and I did it manually. So I don't have yet a working mechanism of creating those blocks using uh, the same block creation semantics as you saw uh, on one of the previous slides, but I'm working on that. Nevertheless, I can very easily like navigate around around the program in Blockly. So I get this stuff for free, like go to uh, go to definition. I can add arguments. If I add an argument, I immediately see the new slots and all the good stuff that I get from MPS. And yeah, so basically the experience is like this. I do a function call, it can call itself, there is no other function, or I can define a function, pressing F. So after a while, it's really quick to use it. Hello, I meant. And um, the main thing is that you can use the keyboard, so it sort of bridges the development experience of sort of serious development and, and this um, uh, stuff for children. In order to be able to export this, I investigated how the XML of Blockly looks. So there's some example of that. Yeah, so Blockly has a very simple format to store uh, the programs. It stores everything as blocks that have uh, three kinds of like subcomponents, fields, statements, yeah, so fields, statements, and and uh, values. So what I decided was that it would be nice to capture the semantics of this very small language. So I created the Blockly XML language, which uh, is just captures the semantics of, of the storage format. 
So it makes the generation process then much cleaner. Then you, you just get a two-step two generation, first from Blockly to Blockly XML, then from Blockly XML to XML, and then from XML to, uh, to, the, um, to the serialized format. So let's have a look. We have an example program in this uh, Blockly XML. <laughs> Unfortunately, I didn't bother creating uh, a proper editor because this is just a help language. So I thought it's not useful to create uh, an editor for it because usually you don't create it by hand. And we can like preview generated text and we have exactly the same format as is used by Blockly. So this implements one way of the conversion. So I can export from uh, MPS into Blockly and then load the, the XML in the browser. So the source of truth, truth for such programs that someone would create would be in Git, getting all the benefits of version control. Um, it could be edited sort of uh, in this efficient way in the MPS. And then as last step, you can export it into XML and load it into the browser so that you can share it uh, with other people who do not have MPS or who prefer to stay with a click uh, uh, with a drag and drop based interface. But uh, yeah, so, so what I've shown is uh, still a specific instance of a Blockly language, but what would be useful would be to be able to easily define um, any languages like that. Um, and for that reason, I started this, uh, this other language, the block definition language. And let's have a look at, at, at just an example of that. So I can define blocks and I'm using the same semantics or a similar semantics as um, very similar semantics as, as this one. So basically I copied I reproduce the semantics of the block definition of this meta blockly and I reproduce it in, in, in MPS and I get nice feedback regarding the color, for example. So I can do a lot of improvements. So I can change the hue and I get in immediate feedback for that. So uh, people who are like designing blockly languages would have also easier time because they would uh, have a more efficient environment to create those languages. Then they can export it into Blockly and use the meta Blockly compiler on the web already to create their Java JavaScript code that uh, they then passed, uh, paste into their project, uh, getting uh, the desired final uh, web editor. So, um, of the time, yeah, so I guess I'm, I'm done. And you can ask questions if you like. Yes? Well, I, uh, I sort of thought it would be interesting to compare um, like Blockly and MPS. Obviously, MPS is a much, much more powerful system, but Blockly has a certain uh, sort of simplicity, but still has some aspects of the projectional editing world, and it has really a big traction. So it sort of hits a sort of a speed sweet spot uh, in certain groups. So I thought maybe people who are uh, already used to manipulate uh, programs in like more structurally uh, could be interested in sort of um, gradual transition to, to, uh, to MPS because they are not predisposed to, to the textu textual world. So I thought uh, this could be interesting from that point of view. Yeah? Uh, 
yes, I'd love to, <laughs> but I'd have to make the editing experience sort of more uh, s streamlined. So, so right now, it's like I can do it because I remember the shortcuts that create the new kinds of block. So I, uh, sorry, yes, I could. There's an embedder uh, goodie for that. I intend to actually do that. So then it could work both ways. You could have the palette, which would be like what what all of those people are used to, and you could also use very quick keyboard-based uh, construction of of those uh, those programs. Mm hmm. Yeah. Maybe. So, uh, one more comment, perhaps. That I think this uh, should could do a nice example for people who are learning MPS, because it's very well defined what has to be done. It's essentially just copying the semantics of the Blockly tools and ecosystem into MPS, and all of the all of the stuff that's there uh, can be easily re-expressed in MPS, just one to one. So. This could be a nice example uh, as a learning material for people who learn MPS. Yeah. Mm -hmm.